My name is Michael Masek. I'm curator of birds at the St. Louis Zoo. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the Wild Care Institute and its involvement with the horn guan. The horn guan is a critically endangered bird found in Mexico and Guatemala. They're found at high elevation cloud forests between 7 and 12,000 feet. And the plants that are found in these areas are very unique. And that's one of the reasons that the horn guan is only found in that area. So what we're doing is nutritionally analyzing the foods that the horn guan eat. They eat 63 varieties of fruits, leaves, and flowers. So we have to go at different times of the year when those particular items are in bloom or in fruit and collect them. And then we're taking those samples and sending them to two different labs in Mexico to look at the nutritional value of those items and how important they are at different times of the year for this species. And the reason this is important, there's actually two elements. One thing, it will help us to create captive diets for the birds that are in Mexico and actually here in St. Louis, and we have the only pair of horn guans in uh, the United States. But it'll also help us maintain more habitat. Because if we understand why those different types of plants are important to the bird, we could potentially save more habitat. Because if we can find the plant in different areas, and we know that that's important to the horn guan, it gives us sort of a more opportunity to convince the governments of Guatemala and Mexico to conserve those areas for this critically endangered bird. There's only about one to 2,000 birds left in just these two isolated areas in El Triunfo, Mexico, where we're working, and in Guatemala near Lake Atitlan. This species is endangered primarily because of habitat destruction. These high cloud forest areas are also prime habitat for coffee. And so a lot of coffee plantations are slowly making their way up the mountain. And what happens is then you essentially have these islands of populations because the birds won't come lower down the mountain and they won't fly from one peak to the next peak. They're sort of similar to a turkey. They can fly, but not really well. So what happens is, as the plantations work their way up the mountain, um, you have isolated populations, habitat deforestation, and there is some hunting of the species in Guatemala as well. So to date, we have about one third of the plants analyzed, and we have at least three more trips planned this year, hoping to get a comprehensive picture of those 63 species of plants that the animal eats. One thing that's really important when you're analyzing the diet of any animal is that when you're collecting the fruits or the seeds or the leaf, whatever the animal eats, is that you're collecting it in the same state. For example, some birds prefer really ripe fruits, some really green fruits, some really green leaves, some mature leaves and seeds, etc. So that's why we have to go at different times of the year and collect the fruit or the seed or the leaf or the flower in the exact same state as when the animal eats it because nutritionally it could be very different. Coffee farming is certainly a threat to the species with regard to habitat loss. And um, one of the things we can do at home is to buy shade-grown coffee. And this is a method where they actually grow the coffee um, that is in a way that it's compatible with the wildlife that lives there. So the next time you buy coffee, think about buying shade-grown coffee. It helps not just the horn guan, but a lot of other birds and animals that are found in the cloud forests of Mexico and Guatemala.